So number eight then from paper two of the 2021 advanced tyre resource paper, seven mark question for this. A curve is defined by this equation. There's the implicit form of the equation. If that's the case, for four marks, find dy by dx in terms of x and y. Well, it's not quite implicit because I could rearrange that for x. But nevertheless, differentiate. Well, you just use the rules of differentiation. There's a product, so you're going to use the product rule. And remember, y is a function of x, so there'll be the chain rule there because you've got a function of a function. So you just do the three parts. Well, the first part's a product. So start with the x squared. That would be 2x. Leave the y squared, y cubed alone. Now leave the x squared alone. Now y cubed, y is a function of x. So the outer function, first of all, cubed, would produce 3y squared. And then multiplying by the inner function, derivative of y with respect to x is dy by dx. Right? Then I'll just put the 3 at the front there. So that's the product done. Now this part, e. Well, e is handy because it just stays e of whatever, but it's a function of a function, chain rule. So multiplied by the derivative of the function it's acting on, the inner function, and the derivative of 2y is 2 dy by dx. That got a wee bit crushed there. 5 doesn't change, derivative is 0. Now you actually get 3 marks for this. I'll give me a mark for each job, that's a wee bit generous. So you get a mark for doing one of the parts of the product, a mark for doing the other part of the product, and a mark for doing the exponential term and presumably throwing the zero in for free. But I've still got to gather it all up because there's two types of terms. There's terms with dy by dx, because that's what I really want. Gather them together. Anything that doesn't say dy by dx, just throw it away to the other side. So that goes over the other side. Minus 2x y cubed. So what have I got all together for dy by dx? So with these two, I've got a 3x squared y squared, and I've got a plus 2 e to the 2y. So finally, take that across and divide. I'll just place that negative in the middle. So 2xy cubed over 3x squared y squared plus 2e to the 2y for that mark. Now part B, show that there's only one stationary point on this curve for three marks. Well, you know when you get a stationary point, you get a stationary point if dy by dx equals zero. Now, if it happens to be a fraction, a rational expression, then it's sufficient for the numerator to equal zero. So my next statement should really just be the top part there, the numerator equals zero, rather than writing out the whole lot. But I will just put out the whole lot just in case, even, though, even the net, that makes no difference either. So just writing out the whole lot then, pointlessly almost. That means that that equals zero, which of course means the numerator equals zero. So it only applies if that part, because two can't equal zero, if that equals zero. Now for those two values to give an answer of zero, one of them's a zero. So you either get x equals zero or y equals zero. Now that doesn't mean they're both zero at the same time. That just means either x is zero or y is zero. Well, you're getting a, a mark for knowing to equate the derivative to zero and a mark for getting those two. But now you've got to demonstrate why only one of them gives an answer. Well, we'll find out what's wrong then by just putting it back in and finding the corresponding y coordinate or finding the corresponding x coordinate. So let's take x equals zero. If you put x equals zero back into this, I'll just call that one. If you put that into equation 1, you're just going to have 0 plus e to the 2y equals 5, in which case 2y would be ln 5. So y is going to be either ln of root 5 or a half of ln 5, whichever you like. Which means that that's a point. So that means there is a stationary point 
at 0, a half ln 5. So something must go wrong with the other one then. So if you put y equals 0 in 1, you're going to have, if y is equal to 0, put it in this one first of all, well that disappears, oh, so you end up with this, you end up with e to the power 0 equals 5. You can't have that, because e to the power 0 is 1. Well, that's inconsistent. Which means there's no solution there. No solution. Which then means there's only one stationary point. Only one stationary point at x equals zero for that mark. So why is this? It always seems to be unsatisfactory when you've got, oh, inconsistent, or oh, just forget it then, get that under the carpet. So, quick, look away. Well, this equation could be rearranged. That could be written as 5 minus e to the 2y all over y cubed, and then do the square root of it. And because it's x and not y, you could have both parts. For it to be a function, there should only be one value of y for each x. But for each y, you can have several values of x. So what does that say? Just to try and get a picture of it. Well, straight away, it's a square root. So y, if I was to try and draw the graph of this, just to see what's going wrong. Y can't be negative. So I can forget all of this part. So the graph exists up here. But also with a 2y in top, once e to the 2y reaches 5, the top would go negative. So there's a top limit as well. So this graph is squashed in here. Not only that, but y can't be zero. Well, there's your answer then, because as y tends to zero, then x is going to go off to infinity. And it'll be replicated, that's the plus and the minus. And there was a limit here. It could only get as high as, and that was the answer there, wasn't it? y equals a half five. So the graph looks like this. I would guess it does that in between. So. Why is there no answer at zero? Well, yes, the gradient would be zero when the y-coordinate was zero, if it could get there, but it doesn't, because again, that's an asymptote on both sides.